Do you feel like you have difficulty losing weight? Did you know that your low copper levels may be causing this? Does everyone else around you get away with eating more but you can't? This video we're talking about how copper affects your ability to burn fat. Researchers at John Hopkins University, one of the most important medical schools in the US, have found that low copper levels have been linked to fatter fat cells. Another team of researchers from UC Berkeley determined this is apparently because it helps to physically move the fats out of fat cells. This explains why a symptom of low copper can be feeling cold or off, because you can't use your body fat for energy. In fact, the amount of copper in the diet of cows affects the amount of fat in the final meat. In fact, when pigs were given more copper, because the copper helped convert the fat on their body into energy, this energy caused them to actually grow better and have more muscle. This explains why a symptom of low copper is muscle weakness. Why is this a problem? Ever since the beginning of the 1900s when we started using artificial fertilizers, the concentrations of minerals in our vegetables have been decreasing. Why? Because the artificial fertilizers only ever replace three elements. In the case of the mineral copper, some studies have found levels to have decreased by 80% whereas for other minerals like calcium, the figures may be closer to 17%. So how do we know we're low, and how can we ensure we get enough? It's difficult to know if you're low because the symptoms are not specific and overlap with lots of other conditions. For example, fatigue can be caused by low copper levels. Muscle weakness can be caused by low copper. Difficulty maintaining body temperature, in other words, feeling cold more often, can be caused by low copper. Even frequent infections can be caused by low copper. All of these symptoms can also be explained by lots of other conditions, so it's hard to tell from symptoms alone. So let's get a blood test, right? Well, unfortunately, it's actually difficult to detect if you're low in copper. Researchers now think that by doing blood tests for the immune system, it might be possible to detect low copper. This is still ongoing work though, and there currently aren't easily accessible ways of reliably testing copper status for the average consumer. Okay, so if we can't test low copper, maybe we can just make sure we get enough copper from food. The thing about minerals from food is that it partly will depend on the soil that grew the food you're eating. Like we mentioned in the last video, copper content of food is dependent on copper levels in the soil to a large degree. We looked at the foods highest in copper to see how it would be possible to get enough copper through food. So we tested the food that is meant to be highest in copper, ox liver. The nutritional data table said that the levels of copper in ox liver are 9.76 milligrams per 100 grams. When we got the results back, we were pretty shocked to see that the ox liver that we bought from an organic butcher's had only 0.54 milligrams per 100 grams. That's about 20 times less copper than we were expecting. Then we thought, okay, maybe the soils are terrible. Maybe if we look at marine sources of copper in foods, then these should be consistent. After all, instead of getting the copper from soil, the copper levels in fish should depend on the copper levels in the sea, which should be pretty consistent across the ocean, right? It's constantly getting mixed. So we thought, let's test the copper content of squid, a food that should have a pretty decent amount of copper. The nutritional data tables say squid should have 1.89 milligrams per 100 grams. This means just 100 grams of squid should really help our copper levels. We tested four different squids, some frozen, some we cooked ourselves, and some we bought from the stores. Once again, we are shocked by the results. One sample of squid had less than 0.06 milligrams per 100 grams. That means it was at least 31 times less than what the nutritional data tables say. Okay, but what about the highest result we got? Even that had about 0.3 milligrams per 100 grams. This means it's about six times lower than the nutritional data tables. We honestly don't know why even marine sources are, are lower in copper nowadays, but it's quite concerning. So it's hard to know who is getting enough copper for their fat burning, because even if you're looking at the nutritional data tables that tell you how much copper is in the food you're eating, these may be dramatically overestimating the amount of copper in your food. You know what is a consistent source of copper though? Supplements. It's normal to find the area of copper supplements confusing, because there's eight different forms available on the UK market. That's why we're in the process of making a follow-up video on the best form and dose of copper to take. We're also working on making videos on other interesting topics like what hormone causes some people to put on more fat on their belly instead of other places, what we can do to change where our body puts its fat, how certain minerals may affect aging, the statistics around the most common nutritional deficiencies that can impair the health of our hair, skin and nails, 
as well as some of the other interesting topics that we cover in the Wellness Bulletin that we produce for NHS healthcare professionals. If you find any of these topics interesting, you can subscribe by going to our YouTube channel page. Or the best thing to do is to sign up to our newsletter at the bottom of any of the pages of our website so we can let you know when a new video is out. The link to our website is on our channel page. Like with all our videos, you can also find all the original sources of our information in the description below.